This episode has been brought to you by JustInform.com. Some people are saying that lately, I've been very critical of Bernie Sanders. And you, of all people, Bernie Sanders, you know it more than anyone else. I may have raised my voice a few times and shouted at the screen. I just couldn't take it no more. So why is he sitting up there pretending like the CIA is some type of bastion of integrity and ethics? The CIA was invented to spread this information, both domestically and abroad. He leaves us no choice. If Bernie cared about fairness in elections, he would start domestically in his own election. I may have said things that were very harsh, even brutal. Come on, y'all. The DCCC, the DNC, and Hillary's private email server that her ass never should have had are not government institutions. Because of truth, unlike some people, I will call out even people that I respect, but he's losing my respect right now, brothers and sisters. It's because Bernie Sanders has either willingly or unwillingly taken part in what I fear is a very dangerous tactic and a very dangerous narrative. That narrative being that for some reason now, Russia has stolen our democracy and we must wage some type of campaign or even worse, heavy-handed sanctions because they have stolen our democracy. To that point, Bernie Sanders has introduced a piece of legislation called Resolution to Protect American Democracy from Russian Meddling. Today, we face an unprecedented situation of a president who, for whatever reason, refuses to acknowledge an attack on American democracy. Either he really doesn't understand what has happened, or he is under Russian influence because of compromising information they may have on him, or because he is ultimately more sympathetic to Russia's authoritarian, oligarchic form of society than he is to American democracy. Whatever the reason, Congress must act and must act now to demand that the President of the United States represent the interest of the American people and not Russia. Bernie Sanders has introduced legislation that takes the focus off of the issues that we know impact our elections every cycle and puts them on Russia. This article sheds a little bit of light on why Bernie Sanders may be pointing and joining the symphony of Democratic politicians and Republicans saying, Russia, Russia, Russia. Special Counsel Robert Mueller has released a list of 500 potential exhibits for Paul Manafort's upcoming trial including photos of his homes, cars, and a pricey watch. Emails between Manafort and Tad Devine, Bernie Sanders' top strategist in the presidential campaign. There are links connecting Paul Manafort and Tad Devine and Russia. Is it possible that Bernie Sanders is now taking this opportunity to further separate himself from those who may have the stink of any type of impropriety, such as Ted Devine, and move a little closer to the group of people who feel that Russia, or at least they say that Russia impacted our elections, even though we know Rod Rosenstein, Robert Mueller, they make no such claims. After reading that article, I came to the realization that Bernie Sanders may have just made himself a political move that he felt to save a possible bid in 2020. Just imagine what the Democratic establishment will do to Bernie Sanders given this new information. They're going to tie Bernie Sanders to Ted Devine. They've already tied Ted Devine to Paul Manafort, Paul Manafort to Russia, and boom! There goes a shot at 2020. Destroyed. So I get what Bernie may have done it. Like, I don't know if this is why, but maybe this is why. And though I understand it, though I realize politics is such a dirty game, and I know the Democrat establishment will use whatever tactic they can to make sure a candidate that they handpick is the one that becomes the nominee. 
But that doesn't mean that I ignore this because this is too big. This is too important to our movement. We need to be calling out all these other forms of election tampering that happen in this country. And I think that uh, Bernie will respect that because it's about the issue. It's not about the man. I'm calling out the action, not him as a human being. But what about the rest? What about all these other issues? What about this? I am not a huge supporter of Rand Paul, though I do believe that at times Rand Paul is sensible on certain issues. Well, Rand Paul's response to Bernie Sanders on his resolution is what I feel is most needed. Here's a piece of his response. Trump derangement syndrome has officially come to the Senate. The hatred for the president is so intense that partisans would rather risk war than give diplomacy a chance. Does anybody remember that Ronald Reagan sat down with Gorbachev and we lessened the nuclear tensions? We need to still have those openings. Nobody is saying or excusing Russia's meddling in our elections. Absolutely. We should protect the integrity of our elections. But simply bringing the hatred of the president to the Senate floor in order to say, we're done with diplomacy. We're going to add more sanctions and more sanctions. You know what? I would rather that we still have open channels of discussion with the Russians. For goodness sakes, we have the former head of the CIA, John Brannan, gallivanting across TV, now being paid for his opinion to call the president treasonous. This has got to stop. This is crazy hatred of the president. This is crazy partisanship that is driving this. For goodness sakes, we don't excuse Russia's behavior in our election, but we don't have to have war. We can still have engagement. We have engaged Russia throughout 70 years while also acknowledging the imperfections of their system, the parts of their system that we vehemently disagree with the lack of freedom, the lack of human rights, and yet we had open channels of negotiation, open channels of communication. So I could not object more strongly to this. Mr. President, I object. Mr. President. Objection is heard. Mr. President. Senator from Vermont. The senator from Kentucky just told us he wants dialogue with Russia. He wants diplomacy with Russia, that he thinks it's important that we communicate with Russia. I agree. Who disagrees with that? There is not one word in this resolution that suggests that the United States of America should not aggressively engage in diplomacy with Russia to ease the tensions that exist between the two countries. What the senator said is totally irrelevant to what is in this resolution. What this resolution says is when it tell Russia, stop interfering in our elections, what this resolution is about is to tell Russia to stop interfering with democratic countries all over the world in their elections. What this resolution is about is saying that we should implement the sanctions overwhelmingly voted by Congress. What this resolution is about is that we will not accept interference with the ongoing investigation of Special Counsel Robert Mueller and that what this resolution says is the president must cooperate with the investigation of Mr. Mueller. That's what this resolution is about. It has nothing to do with ending diplomacy with Russia at all. So that is just inaccurate. And I would hope that if not today, in the very near future, Republicans will join Democrats and do the right thing in our effort to preserve American democracy. Thank you, Mr. President. I could rattle off to you all of the nations that we have meddled in their elections. Chile, Somalia, Argentina, Italy, Israel, Japan, West Germany, Philippines, Brazil, Indonesia, Laos, Iceland, Sri Lanka, Lebanon, Greece, Guatemala, Malaysia, Nepal, San Marino, Peru, Bolivia, Costa Rica, Dominican Republic, Guyana, Thailand, Malta, Uruguay, Iran, Panama, UK, Panama, 
Bulgari, Czechoslovakia, Haiti, Nicaragua, Romania, Albania, Yugoslavia, Serbia, Montenegro, Cambodia, Ukraine, Russia, Slovakia, South Vietnam, Jamaica, El Salvador, Mediterranean, and Granada. And after giving you that list, many of you would go, well, we don't care what we do to others. It's about what others do to us. Many Hillary supporters feel vindicated by the recent trail of events. They feel that, yes, now finally we have true proof that Bernie Sanders worked with Trump and worked with Putin and all these people, all these men ganged up on Hillary Clinton. And if I thought that was the case, I'd ride with you. But the fact of the matter is Hillary Clinton lost that election for many reasons probably a hundred reasons from campaign slogan and campaign strategy to actual campaign person. As of now, this Ted Devine thing, chief strategist for Bernie Sanders campaign, we don't know how far his connections with Paul Manafort go. I'm not even sure what the time frame is of the connections, but just the mere whispers that there may be some type of connection whether tangentially or directly, whether cozy or three parts removed, we don't know. But his name is mentioned some 16 times in a report. Ted Devine also worked for Al Gore. Al Gore was the vice president to Bill Clinton. Bill and Hillary Clinton are married. See, one of the conspiracy theories that they have now is that maybe Trump and Putin and Bernie Sanders work together to ruin Hillary's chances at the White House even though Bernie Sanders endorsed Hillary Clinton to his own detriment he lost many supporters by endorsing Hillary Clinton ah, that doesn't matter he went on a campaign trail for Hillary Clinton Ah, that doesn't matter. They even somehow force themselves to make sense out of the actual documents from the Hillary Clinton campaign that said, hey, let's help Donald Trump. Let's elevate Donald Trump. Let's make him a Pied Piper candidate and elevate him. And let's tell our media people to take him seriously and to cover him. That's the campaign's words back in 2015. But ah, that's nothing. And now you say that somehow the fact that Paul Manafort knows Ted Devine, that Bernie Sanders is now a Russian bot. When will people just admit that Hillary didn't have it? She didn't have it. I know it hurts, doesn't it? If you think that Russia has more sway in our elections than our domestic corrupt system already has, well, I don't know what to tell you. And that's not to exonerate Russia. It's just the truth.